for the technical issues a bit earlier. Uh, we're talking about hacked sites, but first, who am I? So I'm just another WordPress enthusiast, a plugin new dev newbie, and a Star Wars fan, which you can definitely see on my face, it's just written Star Wars fan. <laughs> uh, so, so, when we get hacked, what, how do we feel? What are the five stages that we would go through? Well, we are at the denial phase, uh, so we think that there's no way our website has been hacked. Then we're angry because we find out that, well, we, we have been hacked and yeah, we're quite angry about it. And then we tried bargaining with the code. If I ask nicely, would, would the hack go away? And then we get depressed and finally yeah, we accept that we're hacked and we start cleaning it. Yeah. But the important question here is, why would someone hack us? Well, as Tony Perez says, really the key is automation. So they wouldn't really hack us ourselves, just a person. They would write a script that would hack millions and millions of websites. Well, that sounds a bit harsh, more, more, more likely a couple of thousand websites, but it would go through millions of million sites searching for that security hole and try to hack us through it. There are different types of hacks that uh, could result in different, different reactions in our own websites. My most favorite one is the JavaScript injection. So has anyone of you opened a website and automatically been redirected to another website or just opened some really suspicious uh, website for betting or pharmacy, like a suspicious one that pops out just a website for toys? Has anyone gotten this ever? No? Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. Well, that's actually a JavaScript injection. That doesn't mean that, well, at least 99% of the time, it doesn't mean that the person that made the website has actually made that happen. So that means that their website has been hacked and someone injected this redirection towards a website or a bunch of websites or just a random redirection to somewhere else in their own database. And there are different types of hacks. There's, of course, the website defacement, uh, which just replaces our website with something else. There's SQL injections, click There's so many types of hacks, and each one of them would be different. So one type of hack can make our website send emails for uh, selling Viagra, for instance. That actually happens quite often. And we have a website for teddy bears. And having that, that it wouldn't really do a good thing for our reputation. So this is very unpleasant and that's not only the type of hack. There are other types of hacks that could get information, get uh, sensitive information from our website if we're doing online payments, for instance, or other, other types of stuff. Not always we can find out that we're hacked that easily. But what can we do? We can always use a scan. So there are more than the three scans I have actually listed. But a couple, those ones are really easy to use. So one of them is the scan, which is actually a command line to, to test our websites for any vulnerabilities. However, this is for the more advanced people, the more technical ones, and there are less technical tools we can scan our website for any hack. So we can use Sucuri site check, which is the easiest way you can scan your website. However, the results are not always the best you can get. There, the results can sometimes vary and you, yes, Sucuri detects uh, the, big, the bigger type of scans, but the bigger types of hacks, but not everything. So then a better solution for a non-technical person would be WordFence. WordFence gives you a more detailed information about the last modified files, about uh, what, what files seem suspicious and what you can do about them. And of course, if you are technical enough, I really I, I really suggest to use the OP scan. It's really good. It's a really good tool you can use. So whoever wants to use it, I really appreciate that. It's a really good tool. Okay. So what do we do when we actually get hacked? Well, the first thing is we need to stay calm because if we panic, then we wouldn't really have a good, a good solution. We wouldn't be able to think about it. We wouldn't really be able to do anything proper. So 
Uh, step number two, we should go through our recent updates. Sometimes the hack can occur after we have installed a very suspicious plugin or we have updated something. So make your research. Maybe someone else got hacked right after installing a plugin or just right after updating a certain plugin. Of course, updating is the best possible option for every element in your website. However, there are some suspicious plugins from certain developers at certain points that maybe we should be a bit more careful about what we install and what not. Uh, and number three, well, get angry and become the hook. Don't become the hook, but start cleaning your website. And Let's proceed about the core. Well, the core is what's most often to be hacked. Um, well, plugins as well, teams as well, but the core is the easiest part we can actually clean. So most often, uh, an attacker would disguise it would disguise a file for a core looking one. Instead, for instance, that would be include.php, just note the missing E, uh, or that would be authentication, just uh, see how it's written, .php, and that would be I am not a hacked file.php, of course. But the only way to be sure, even if you have already tested, scanned, but you still think that there might be something left in your core, the only way to be sure that that your core files are clean, is just to replace them all. Those are the core files. They're literally folder DAOP admin, DAOP include, and everything outside of DAOP content. Uh, what sh is, isn't really the best option to be uh, to be removed is of course DAOP config.php because that holds our database information. So it's good to check the file, but not, not just to replace it because our website would, of course, be broken afterwards, afterwards if we don't have our database details properly. So we should be careful with that one. And we have a really, really, really easy five minute protection plan. Like it can get any easier, just three steps. It's not uh, a lot about protection rather than prevention, but it's just three steps. So what's, what's on it? First one is to keep your core up to date. Keep everything up to date, not only your WordPress version, your plugins, your teams. Keep everything updated because a lot of the updates are made for because of security holes. So developers find or have been reported of different security holes, they make a patch for it, so they release an update. So use this information and keep everything up to date. There is a reason for it to have an update. Uh, number two. Change your login from DAOP admin to whatever else you want. A lot of the automated scripts we were we mentioned a bit earlier have ha, uh, have their brute force attacks for DAOP admin. So they are looking for that URL and they try to brute force your website to log into your website using automatically generated username and password. So one way to prevent this this particular hack to our website is to change our login URL. It's a really good practice and it's so easy to do. You can use a plugin or if you're more technical, you can just customize it. You can do it with a uh, certain code, with uh, AC access rules, with everything really. There are so many options, but it's not hard to do and it prevents really a big, big part um, of those automatic scripts. Okay, and the third one, have a cool username. Having a username such as admin, administrator, or anything alike is a bad practice because a lot of those scripts that are trying to log into our websites are using that same username, everything that comes from admin to try to log into our website. So having such a username is not a good practice. Having your name as username is much better of a practice than having admin or administrator. <coughs> and uh, that was <laughs> very quick, basically. I didn't expect uh, to talk that fast, <laughs> and we lo lost uh, a lot of time. So if you have any questions, uh, you can find me on Twitter, write me an email, or just find me or wait in WordCamp. I'd love to answer all of your questions. I'm sure some of you would have questions for different types of hacks, your own experience. So uh, I'd be happy to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah.